Google launches everything that they've already shown us. YouTube might be blocking ad blockers and Nvidia getting real petty. Get ready for the real GPU wars. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet this Thursday, May 11th, 2023, while you enjoy your breakfast. We're gonna start off today talking about the little tinkling inkling of the beginning of the GPU wars. AMD putting out another press release trying to get you to be convinced that Nvidia's old stuff sucked. Didn't at the time, but now it does a few years later with them tweeting out this comparison chart of the 6800 versus the RTX 3070. What you can see is that the 6800 beats it in so many different games. Never mind the fact that the 6800 was slotted in to compete with the RTX 3080 when it first launched. Yes, it is with more VRAM about double so much, but you know, these GPUs did not cost the same amount on launch. Now, Nvidia is not selling the 3070 anymore. AMD still selling the 6800 because they haven't given us any replacement GPU. Meanwhile, Nvidia has already given us a replacement for the 3070 in the 4070, which would beat the 6800 at the launch price that the 6800 came out with. None of that context is there. And in fact, a lot of the context in this chart's a little weird too, because you see it says 32 games across RT and raster. Turns out that's that's not true at all because the AMD rep who said, uh, somebody said, turn ray tracing on and do it again. And then he said, it is on. And then he had to clarify a few hours later that the title of the slide is labeled incorrectly because ray tracing was not actually turned on. And that's actually the scenario in which Nvidia loses to AMD is when ray tracing it's not turn on, which this is the how the vast majority of gamers actually play it. But it's just it feels a little weird of AMD to not release a card that replaces the 6800 and is still fighting a battle that they lost back in 2020. For some reason, they're trying to convince us that you made the wrong decision, which doesn't help people to make current decisions. I guess there might be some people who are looking at picking up a 3070. Now they're they're below MSRP. The 6800 does slot in nicely at its current price to where you could get it, but it just, it feels a little hollow in my opinion. Let me know what you think of AMD putting out these figures down below. And I'm gonna put out this figure. Today's video is sponsored. Today's video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. Now, thankfully I've never Never been in a car accident, but I know friends and family members who have, and I have this clear memory as a child of being in a courtroom with my dad when he was hit by a distracted driver, and the thought of having to go through all of that seems overwhelming, but not with Morgan & Morgan. They've modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave the couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, and doctor bills all from your phone. You can even text your attorney and case manager without ever having to go to an office. If you're injured and don't know where to start with Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were injured in an accident. And if you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, and you have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com forward slash UFD or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. Big thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. But combined with that weirdness that AMD's got going on with their charts, they also have some weirdness coming on with ray tracing because they're revealing and capsaicin graphics framework, which is now out, which you may remember that AMD put out a capsaicin graphics card. This is not the same thing. This is like software for how you implement different features into video games and allows game devs to test everything out with various cards. And you can use it as a plugin in Unreal Engine 5 to test it versus different things, but it's not the graphics card. AMD is just getting into ray tracing stuff and Google's getting into launching new products. With the Google I.O. event, they showed off a lot of stuff with their phones, a lot of stuff with AI, and now we know more details with regards to the 7A and Pixel Fold that are coming out from them. So the Pixel 7A, it's gonna have a Tensor G2 chip. It's gonna have a whole host of features for only $499, eight gigabytes of RAM, 4,386 milliamp hour battery, 128 gigs of storage, 90 Hertz refresh rate, IP67. It's gonna have wireless charging, face unlock. And that 499 price at the Google store comes with a free pair of Pixel Bud A series. But if you use our affiliate link in the video description to pick it up at best by if you get it activated you get it for 450 bucks but then on top of that there's an additional 50 dollars best buy gift card if you you get it so you can get this bad boy for nearly 399 effectively which is the 
cost of the Pixel 6a right now. Heckin' affordable, but what is not is the Pixel Fold, which got revealed at the leaked price of $17.99. It does come with a free Pixel watch, which very few people actually want, and it's not gonna ship until June 27th. So it has essentially everything that we already knew. Outer display of 5.8 inches, inner displays of 7.6 inches, 120 hertz refresh rate. It's got a whole bunch of other foldable goodness. We already know a lot of details. It's not shipping for over a month from now. Are you enticed by this? Do you want the Pixel Fold? Is this relevant? Are you gonna wait until Samsung comes out with the Z Fold 5 is what we're gonna be on? They're saying it's the thinnest folded phone. Let me know if that interests you. But what does interest me is a lot of the other stuff that Google showed off at their IO event, especially with a lot of things in the AI region. So number one, I think the most useful thing for me personally and for a lot of people is the universal translator, which will lip sync and dub various videos. So essentially hot news could be broadcast in a multitude of different languages and my lips would sync up with the various translations that are being put out there. This has typically been reserved for YouTube channels with much larger resources than we have or even productions that require some sort of localization. You have to hire people in order to make that happen. This would make it more accessible. However, they're essentially acknowledging that this is deep faking somebody's face and making it translate on it. So they're saying that there's a tension between boldness and safety, and they're working on trying to figure out how to roll this out in the best way possible and saying this is an enormous step forward for learning comprehension, and we're seeing promising results in course completion rates with regards to rolling this out in education departments. I would love to see this potentially get rolled out as part of YouTube, just to make videos more accessible for a lot of different people. The utility of AI is definitely very clear. And Google announcing that they are rolling out more search features with AI. It's gonna be available for you to test out, but in case you don't wanna be on what the public has, and you wanna be on some of the behind the scenes stuff, they have Google search labs that will allow you to test their search powered products and ideas. Currently, you can test out search generative experience, which will allow you to do generative AI in Google search. Then also they'll have code tips, which will help you to code with the AI and then add to sheets where you can bring some stuff over into Google sheets. But also one of the things that they're trying to compete with Microsoft Bing and Dolly is the fact that they're partnering with Adobe to bring Firefly to Google image generation so that you can get different images generated. This is one of the things Adobe has been talking about for a while, Firefly making it so that you can have stock images just kind of produced by AI, but doing it in a way where they actually got consent from the artists who have had their work subjected to the AI, which is going to be a continuous problem as AI is rolling out to all of these major companies. Nobody's paying for the data. Nobody's paying to have access to it. They're just saying, hey, it's fair use because the AI is transforming it. Adobe, at least on the outside, has said that they have like one of the best processes. We'll have to see if there's any revelation of like, it's not actually true. <laughs> What's that, Brett? Distrust in major companies. I would have never guessed that you could do that. And you'd never guess that Google is switching over to NVIDIA for their upcoming AI supercomputers. Their A3 supercomputers with NVIDIA's H100 chips. They're moving on to NVIDIA's new L4 Tensor Core GPUs for serving all of those AI workloads. It's just going to serve that NVIDIA is gonna be a gigantic company no matter what. They got the crypto boom, they got the AI boom, and yeah, their stock's up a little bit at the announcement. And I'm up a little bit for Reese. I'm awake, not the other thing. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. As you can see, I have power again. It's lovely, it's a great thing, I enjoy it. And one thing I also enjoy is today's deals. Starting off with the Logitech G Pro X gaming headset. If you don't mind the whole League of Legends aesthetic, then you can pick one up for only $59.99, making this a whole $70 off or 54% and the lowest price in 30 days. But then next up, we have the Asus VG246H, a 23.8 inch 1080p 75 hertz monitor, going for only $109.99, making it 42% off and the lowest price in 30 days. And then lastly, we have an absolute banger deal on the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X, making it only $234 with the included promo code. This takes your total off to $75 and the lowest price in 30 days, win-win all around. And don't forget to claim your free Star Wars Jedi Survivor code during checkout. And that's it, those are the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news, cheers. Thanks Reese, but isn't UFD deals just a giant ad for our affiliate links? Yes, it is. But if you want YouTube to not serve you those ads, well, too bad because ad blockers are being blocked by YouTube themselves, at least in experiments that are being tested across the different users who have YouTube. So Reddit posted that they got this screen right here. Ad blockers are not allowed on YouTube. It looks like you might be using an ad blocker. Ads allow YouTube to stay free for billions of users worldwide. You can go ad free with YouTube premium and creators can still get paid from your subscription. So you can choose to either allow YouTube ads or try YouTube premium. YouTube coming out and 
saying that this is just an experiment for now. They're only testing blocking ad blockers. This is something that they tested with other things and then it eventually got rolled out that it was part of it. Obviously, as a creator, I personally would like to get paid. You know, I have a whole company, I other people's mouths to feed. Isn't that right, Kyler? What? Don't you like when I feed your mouth? Yeah. I have, I have a bunch of employees that we try to actually make sure are provided for here. So when you don't have ads on here, it makes it so that like there's an entire ecosystem and economy that's moved forward. But this could also help to explain why YouTube shut down YouTube Vance a little while ago with legal concerns back in March of last year. And then it recently came out that YouTube Vance, the actual app, even though you could get the APK for it, that also got shut down. So you could only use it for shorts, but then you have to use the revanced app in order to make that happen. I didn't tell you that, that's not a real thing. But in case you wanna support UFD Tech and don't have any ads, including the Morgan & Morgan ad that we showed you earlier today, you can sign up for Floatplane where we deliver at least, we try to put out all of our videos with no ads before you get them here. Can't always do that when it comes to news because of the rapid cycle, but definitely without the sponsors, we put them over on Floatplane in case you wanna support us. But also let me know what you think of YouTube blocking ads. Most people I think who use ad blockers are going to be against this. Let me know actually specifically if you use an ad blocker, but you're okay with YouTube blocking your ad blocker, but you can't block the progress, the forward march of GPUs going super fast. Nvidia's RTX 4090 getting overclocked to 3.825 gigahertz which is the fastest clock speed on any graphics card ever. It was 3D stable in Unigen's superposition benchmark. Absolutely mind boggling liquid nitrogen overclocking that you can see right here on an iGame colorful GPU. That was absolute super speed. It was the GTX 1060, I believe, was the first GPU to go past the three gigahertz barrier when it came to liquid nitrogen overclocking. It was like a Galax thing. It was actually the South African overclocker, Dr. Wheeze, who made it happen. I was very proud of that moment because that happened when I was still in South Africa. And so I just, I like seeing this because 3.825 gigahertz, that is very fast, but it's not a new GPU. And Asus made it seem like we were getting a new GPU this week because they were like, guess which new GPU we're launching? Turns out it's the 4090. Again, they have two new versions, but this time it's gonna be the 3090 as a 4090 because it's the tough OG is what they're calling it because it's the original tough GPU with the shroud and everything and the same PCB that they just slotted the 4090 chip into. So on the left, that is the new tough OG. GPU and on the right is what the 4090 originally launched as. So it's supposed to just be a simpler way of doing it because it's the 3090 shroud and PCB. So technically it should cost less because it costs Asus less. We'll see if that actually happens. They also announced a liquid cooled version of the 4090 as well. We thought, at least I did in my dumb brain, thought that the 4060 Ti was gonna get announced, but turns out that's gonna happen a little later, especially in the GPU wars that are happening. Can we get like a cool graphic, Catlin? Of the GPU war is commencing or something. I don't know, put like half a second of effort into it. So it turns out NVIDIA wants to get really petty because the RX 7600 launch date has been known for a little while, May 25th. And guess when NVIDIA is gonna be launching the 4060 Ti? Kyler, venture a guess. He's got noise canceling headphones that makes this whole back and forth on hot news a little weird, but it's gonna be the tw Yeah, it was, but it's fine now. <laughs> AMD's launching the 7600 on the 25th. Guess when NVIDIA's launching the 4060 Ti? 25th? 24th. The day before, they wanna be known ahead of time. And this is just because they're likely gonna be targeting roughly the same price point. As far as we can guess, it's probably gonna be 399 versus 399 or thereabouts. And according to the behind the scenes report, the Nvidia GPU is gonna be 22 teraflops. The AMD GPU is gonna be 21.2 teraflops. And they're both gonna have the same memory bus. We don't know about memory bandwidth at this point. They're both gonna have the same PCI Express interface. They're, it's like, like these are gonna be neck and neck cards. So it's really gonna come down to the pricing and whether or not you wanna deal with these drivers. We don't know the speed of the memory 
on an AMD's GPUs just yet, but it because of NVIDIA choosing to change up their things with how they're launching the 4060 and the 4060 Ti does look like they're taking this competition from AMD very seriously. In yesterday's episode of Hot News, we talked about the fact that they're gonna have a 16 gigabyte version of the RTX 4060 Ti that's gonna be launching in July. And this might be in direct competition with the fact that the 7600 is gonna be so close to the 4060 Ti. They might be like, yeah, you like the 4060 Ti now? Listen, we're we're launching before AMD, so we don't even have to talk about them in our announcement. But we, the, the, the 16 gig's gonna come out and that's gonna be, it's not gonna be faster in any way. It's just gonna have more VRAM. And AMD is only giving you eight gigabytes. They suck. We're, we're giving you 16. So they're gonna flip that VRAM argument around. You know, the one that we talked about at the beginning of Hot News, the 6800 versus the 3070? They're doing the same thing. It's the exact same maneuver. And the 7600 did get listed for the first time. We showed you that it was in retail stores yesterday in the hot news that came out then. But now we have some details on the pricing, roughly $410 at a store in Singapore, which is selling it right now that you could potentially get it on May 26th if you buy it right now for that $400 price point. It's hard to know whether or not that's gonna translate to the US price. If the 7600 comes in at 349, the 4060 Ti comes in at 399. Again, these are just all speculative figures. I have no information behind the scenes on any of this. Well then, AMD might make a little bit more sense at that point, unless you need NVIDIA's features like frame generation, et cetera. Let me know if the 4060 Ti and the 7600 are at the same price, who do you pick? Then what price does the other card have to be for you to switch? I, a lot of theoretical number gesturing there. What what are what are the optimal price points for you to want to pick up one versus the other? Let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna let you know that hot news is over. I'll be back to close out your week with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.